What's up my people, what's up machine freaks? I am up here at the shop at the warehouse. I have the Jeep right here. The Jeep does not look too much different from yesterday. However, the shop does look different as you can see. I got a lot of those boxes out of here. I'm trying to make it easier to stay on path. I have the differential right here. I only have a few components I have to do. I have to remove the, uh, the drum brakes, the e-brake, the cable. Clean all this debris out of there. And then other than that, I think this side I have accomplished. Oh yeah, that's right. I have to remove the axle hub here. I need to pull this right out so that when this gets sandblasted, or, or not sandblasted, it shouldn't be affected when it's sandblasted, but when I go to powder coat it, because as you guys know, I'm powder coating basically everything to make a bulletproof vehicle, something that uh, it, once it gets dirt, salt, anything on it, it kind of just falls off where paint, it. it once you get it chipped, it rusts away, at least here in New York. But like I was saying, I'm going to get this powder coated. So when it comes to the sandblasting process, I think I'm going to keep it just like this because the, the sandblasting guy will be able to get over here. He'll be able to get behind there. He won't hurt anything out here. He'll clean up our bolts nice and clean so we can even powder coat our bolts. He'll sandblast all this up so there's no point in me cleaning this right now because the sand will just tear all that right out. Then once it comes back from sandblasting, then we take the axles out, then we put new bearings in after it's powder coated. There's just a lot of steps and you gotta stay well organized. That's what my notebook's for. My notebook is coming in clutch. For example, I need those two plastic, uh, whatever they are. I'm gonna call it that. I saw a lot of questions and concerns in the last 3D Machines production comment section, so I'll be sure to uh, get to as many, well, as much information as I can. But first, let's get this all torn apart. The diff is done and ready to be sandblasted. As you can see, I'm keeping these, this dust shield, or I actually forgot the name of it again. I'm gonna have that sit just like that so when he goes to sandblast this, he can get here and then get here and then if he needs to move it, he can move it. He doesn't have to completely remove it. Now this transmission was missing a few bolts, so I just put some in here just for, just for joining purposes. So you can see I got a bolt in here with two huge washers, a nut. Definitely not something that comes off the assembly line or in the factory. And then here I just have a bolt, a lock washer, and then a regular washer. That one's slightly more suitable. What I would like to do is remove both the engine and the transmission at one time. So that way we can get uh, moving forward on the frame, our foundation. One of my buddies might come up and if he does, we'll save that process for when he comes up. Otherwise, I'm going to work on the, the drive shaft right now because that thing's looking rusty and crusty. If we're gonna powder coat as much stuff as we are, we may as well do things like that. Even though nobody's ever going to see it, it'll last a long time. Ethan ended up coming up and he took off the front sway bar here. He's got some of his tools and the nuts and bolts. One thing that's definitely coming to mind now is the fact that when I do install my four inch suspension lift, there are going to be components that are that are going to be bolted on because, uh, well, because companies don't want to rely on people having a welder or not. Everybody can buy a drill. Everybody can buy a drill bit. So all rough country stuff is bolt on. Well, I'm going to weld a lot of my stuff on because I have the luxury of a welder. But some of these components you don't weld on. But I do, I think I wanna powder coat some of these because I wanna shy away from a lot of things black. A lot of people have black components. I don't wanna be like that. I wanna have a lot of red. If you know anything about lighting and cameras, black is terrible with cameras. So that's why mostly I'm going towards red and not a lot of people have it. So you gotta stick out. You gotta be a machine, you gotta stand out. Also, I took off all this rusty, crusty mess that was on the transfer case. I tore that all apart, which took me a very, 
very long time. It's sitting right here. I'm trying to keep everything grouped together. There's all the, the components right there so that everything in there will be sandblasted and then there are some components not in there that will not be sandblasted. As you can see, I actually cut this one portion out. I had to do that in order to get one of the bolts out, but now that that's cut and after it's sandblasted, we'll go ahead and weld that together and it'll be brand new. Now I wanna assess the situation for either the engine and transmission removal or just the front end because I kinda of wanna get this frame and other components to the sandblaster so we can start having our brand new foundation. more bucks for you. And just like that, the grill's off. A few days when I took the oil pan off, I only lost one bolt, I finally found it. It's on the front differential there. I currently have a whole bunch of stuff from Rough Country, including like this whole front portion here. I'm thinking since the wheels are on here, and the engine's right here, and it's kind of as far forward as it can go, I'll put the cherry picker up here, and then once we get the engine and the transmission, because we're gonna keep those two together, once we keep, once we put that up in the air, we can just then pull this whole assembly back instead of moving our transmission and our engine with a cherry picker. Basically, we'll have a dolly on steroids. Uh, so Ethan and I just prepped the engine and the cherry picker. He, you guys probably recognize him. He bought the blue chopper off of me. You still got it? Oh yeah. Does it run? Yeah. Kind of? Yeah. Does it run good? Yeah. It does? It gets me around. <laughs> so he's been my intern. We're going to try to pick this thing up. We got the nuts off of both sides of the bolts that hang on to the engine mounts. Conveniently enough, this transfer case wasn't even bolted down, so that should come right up. So I have a chain right here. I have two points on the engine, so basically we're gonna have three three points here and we're gonna lift it up. Jesus. That was a PB blaster. That's ridiculous. It's probably gonna seize that death. Well, we got the engine, the transmission, and transfer case out. It was soon apparent that we didn't neck, um, we didn't really have this last chain on too good because what had happened was all the, all the weights are actually right here, and all I did was put two chains on the front of the engine, so all the torque was going back here and was put on this chain, but this chain was definitely not far enough back. So it kind of was a pain, but uh, you know, you live and you learn. We had fun. Uh, it was definitely chaotic, wasn't it, Ethan? Oh, yeah. But it definitely won't go back in the Wrangler like this because I have a clutch coming, a two-stage clutch, and I have to replace some seals. I don't know if it's leaking out of the engine or the transmission, but I'll replace both seals, so we're, we'll be good. If you're going to have it out, make sure to change simple stuff like seals. Otherwise, you put it together, and then it, it starts leaking, and then you got to do it all over again. And nobody likes to do things all over again. Now we'll be able to make stuff pretty on the engine. I'll probably get the fan even powder coated. I have to replace the timing chain on this thing, and I think the kit comes with this water pump, so all this stuff will be brand new. Basically, everything's getting a renovation and a restoration, so this thing's gonna be clean. It's not gonna be a 97 or a 99. The 99, or the engine is a 99, the chassis is a 97. We're pushing this stuff to the 2018, which is very, very, very exciting. A lot of you machines and machine freaks were inquiring about 10 plus minute videos in the, the comment section. So I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to answer a lot of questions as well. If you have any comments or concerns, put them in the comment section below. Your feedback helps these videos run like a well-oiled machine. Without your creativity and without my creativity, there's not as, as good of creativity. So just, just put it in the comment section. Trust me. 
The videos only get better when you comment. You guys need to get on your keyboards a little bit more. So then I can start swearing at the haters, you can start swearing at the haters, everybody start swearing at the haters, and the world is a better place. Stay froggy fresh, stay super fly. Until next time, we'll see you later. 3D Machines out. Yeah.